Now Ed Hardebeck describes a different gestural system. One of the things I'm working on is methods of using body positions and gestures to communicate with computers. I've built a system that recognizes digitized television images of body silhouettes. A user stands in front of a television camera. His image is then digitized and fed to a host computer which recognizes the image, displays it on a screen, or uses it in some other process. Let me show you the steps in the recognition process. Here's a silhouette. We scan this to find the center points of segments. This produces something like a stick figure which we then segment into parts that generally correspond to arms and legs. We then find straight lines. Then a parser attempts to figure out which segment corresponds to which limb. Once we've recognized the position of the body, we can display a flower in the same position. We'd like to make a display that could follow the motions of a person in real time. Since 1967, Logo has been the best language for learning. But when we started using dynamic objects like sprites, we saw the need to renovate the language. We want to be able to control many objects operating at the same time, as well as make our own objects. We also look forward to writing large programs more easily. This led us to develop QLogo. Jeremy Jones and Stephen Hain are part of the development team led by Gary Drescher. Hi, I'm Gary Drescher. I've been working on an extended version of Logo called QLogo. QLogo adds to Logo the power of object-oriented programming, a concept pioneered in languages such as Simula, Smalltalk, and the Lisp Machine Flavor System. An object-oriented language lets you define your own kinds of objects. A new object can be defined as a specialization of a previous one, inheriting all the attributes of the previous kind, but adding features of its own as well. The turtle is a traditional object that I've already defined here in QLogo. Having defined it, I can make a number of them, like so. I can tell the turtles to move about, to put their pens down and draw lines, to do all the kinds of things that traditional logo turtles can do. I can also make new kinds of objects that are specializations of the turtle. I've defined one such specialization, which I call the solid turtle. Here are three solid turtles. A solid turtle is just like a regular turtle, except that a solid turtle has a sense of physical presence. Solid turtles push one another around when they collide. So for example, I can grab this solid turtle down here and use it to bang into these other turtles, shoving them aside. Suppose I want to further specialize one of these turtles so that when it moves, it leaves behind a drawing of itself. All I need to do is redefine its version of the new position procedure. This procedure is defined to draw the turtle's shape, as well as doing what a turtle's new position procedure usually does. Now I've got a turtle that paints a trail behind it as it moves. Here's a simulation of some flowers being pollinated by bees. Female flowers, male flowers, and bees have all been defined as specializations of solid turtles. When a bee collides with a male flower, it picks up a piece of pollen. When a bee carrying pollen subsequently collides with a female flower, it transfers the pollen to the flower, and a bunch of baby flowers spring up around it. Eventually, the screen becomes quite crowded. In the world of Logo, turtle-like objects have been around for quite a while. But QLogo lets you define such objects yourself. This gives you the flexibility to build upon these objects to create more complicated ones of your own design. Compared to other object-oriented languages, QLogo simplifies object-oriented programming without sacrificing its power, making it accessible to novice and expert programmers alike.